There are five buttons on the Newton. Top arrow, right arrow, bottom arrow, left arrow, and center button. When the Newton is off, the screen is blank. To turn the Newton on, press any button. If you have power stroke in your Newton, you'll see on fast record. Click the center button to clear the message and you'll come to the main screen. You'll see the bullseye in the center window flash. This means the Newton is looking for the Ant Plus sensors. Spin your bicycle crank to wake up the sensors. When you do, the Newton will detect it and you'll see a message saying that it has found the speed and cadence sensor. The bullseye is now solid, indicating that the sensors have been found and your Newton is ready to ride. The center button serves as the home button for the Newton. When you click the center button, you'll notice that the screens change above. There are two main screens. This is the bicycle speedometer screen. It shows speed in the top window, watts and distance traveled in the middle window, and elapsed time in the bottom window. To switch to the power meter screen, click the center button once. You'll see speed in the top window, power in the middle window, and cadence in the bottom window. If you have an Amp Plus heart rate strap and have paired it, you'll also see the bottom window alternate between cadence and heart rate. As you ride along, you'll see the current values displayed for the window you've selected. Either the power window, speed, power, and cadence, or the bike computer window, speed, distance, and power, and time. Now you may want to see the average and maximum values as you ride along. To do that, you click the top arrow, average, max. Click the top arrow once, and you'll see your average values, and the flash will show average in the top. After a few seconds, it will automatically return to the main screen. If you want to see your maximum value so far, click the top arrow twice to get to the maximum. Max will flash in the top window, and after a few seconds, it'll revert back to the current values. The right arrow shows you your environmental conditions. Click the arrow one time, and you'll see current temperature and time. Click it again, and you'll see current hill slope, ground wind speed, and current elevation. Click it again, and it will return to the main screen. Or you can simply click the center button at any time to return to the main screen. By clicking the bottom arrow, you can select the top screen to show either hill slope or wind speed. Click it one time, and you'll see hill slope continuously displayed in the top window of the Newton. Click it again and you'll see ground wind speed continuously displayed in the Newton. You can click the arrow again to return to the main screen or press the center button to return to the main screen. The left arrow gives you total information for your ride. Click it one time and you'll see the current state of charge of your battery. Click it again and you'll see the kilojoules or calories that you've burned on the ride so far. Click it again, you'll see the distance you've traveled on this ride and also the cumulative elevation climbed during the ride. There are three specialized measurements in the Newton called normalized power, NP, intensity factor, IF, and training stress score, TSS. These are specialized power measurements that you can learn about in the Newton instruction manual. Click the total button again and you'll see how full your ride memory is. This Newton ride memory is 38% full. The Newton will record data all the way up to the 100% mark. After it reaches the 100% mark, data will no longer be recorded, but it will still be displayed on the Newton screen. Here we see the total distance traveled on this Newton since it was built and also the total amount of time and clicking the button again returns you to the main screen. Remember that you can find any measurement that you're looking for in particular and to return to the main screen, just click the center button. I now want to show you what happens when you press and hold each of the buttons. Let's start with the center button. If I press and hold it, I'll see a message called trip reset. This resets all of the ride data and starts a new ride file. Now, 
the message flashed indicating that it wanted me to confirm that I really wanted to reset the ride. I didn't click the button again, so it says not reset. I click to clear the message. I'm now going to click the trip reset button again. Now I'm going to confirm my desire to do it by clicking the button. The entire message flashes. I've now started a new ride file. All Newton models are best set up using the Isaac software. In Power Stroke models, you can make adjustments by press and holding the up arrow to enter setup. Setup takes you into a series of screens where you can set parameters for your Newton. This again works only with the Power Stroke version. To get out of setup, I press and hold the up arrow. On Pro and Power Stroke models, if I press and hold the right arrow, I enter the fitness training screens. These are special screens that help you quantify your level of cycling fitness and to use the workouts that are built into the Newton. This is the fitness test. Once the fitness test is done, there are a series of different kinds of workouts that you can use, all of which are power-based, that are based on your fitness test results. You can read about this in the Newton instructions. Once I'm finished using the fitness test workouts, I press and hold the right arrow, end train appears, and the device reverts to the main screen. The Newton does a great job of measuring hill slope. In the top window, we normally show bike speed. If you'd like to see hill slope when you're climbing hills, press and hold the bottom button a message called Hill Auto will appear. Now, when you're climbing, whenever the hill slope exceeds 2%, the top window will alternate between current bike speed and current hill slope. If you don't want this function, press and hold the bottom button. It will turn the Hill Auto Hill feature off. While you ride along, you can create lap markers by press and holding the left arrow. The lap number will be shown as well as statistics for it. If you want to create another lap, just simply press and hold the lap marker again. Very occasionally, you might find a circumstance where your Newton becomes unresponsive to keystrokes. This means that the microprocessors become confused. I've intentionally forced the situation here where the lap marker is flashing and nothing is happening. The Newton needs to be reset. There are two ways to do it. On older model Newtons, you will press and hold the left, bottom, right, and center buttons simultaneously. That would do a hard reset. In the most current models that we manufacture, instead, you press and hold the center button continuously. It takes about 10 seconds, but after about 10 seconds, the Newton will shut off and reset itself. Just continue to hold the button, the Newton does a hard reset, and you're ready to go again. After 20 minutes, your Newton will turn itself off automatically, but you may want to turn it off yourself. To do that, click the left arrow one time until you see the battery percentage screen, then press and hold the center button. Battery off will appear, and when you release the button, the Newton will turn itself off. The wind sensor is calibrated at the factory, but if you want to check the calibration, while in the window showing the wind speed in the top window, press and hold the top arrow. You'll come to a measurement called Cal Wind. You'll notice that the number in the top window flickers slightly. You'll want to do this in a place where there is very little ambient wind, and this number should be close to zero. To calibrate the wind sensor, just simply click the center button. It'll show you that it's completed the calibration and then return to the main window. We recommend this be done very carefully and only if the number is significantly different from zero.
If you use your Newton with an ant plus speed and cadence sensor other than the one shipped with the Newton, then you're going to need to do a pairing. Spin the crank on your bicycle to wake up your speed and cadence sensor. Once it's awake, you're going to want to do what's called a scan. This allows the Newton to detect your ant plus sensor. To do a scan, you press and hold the top and bottom arrows simultaneously. After a moment, it'll say scan. The zero will flash indicating it's looking for a sensor. It has found the speed and cadence sensor, and now you'll see the pulsing indicating that it's looking for other sensors. Your Newton is capable of finding both a heart rate sensor and if you have a direct force power meter, it is well. It has not found a heart rate sensor. It is now going to scan for a direct force power meter. We do not have one on this bicycle, so after a moment we'll also see a message saying DFP off. The scan process will now complete. You'll notice that the bullseye is lit solidly, indicating that the sensor is paired. If you see dash 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 W in the screen, this indicates that your Newton either needs to be calibrated with a short ride, or you can do a more detailed best calibration using the setup procedure in Isaac software.